Jimmy Armijo Grover here from Gallatin River Guides in Big Sky, Montana. Uh, today we'll be tying the hare's ear trude. Um, originally an Idlewild flies pattern, um, one of our favorites here for years at Gallatin River Guides, especially during the spruce moth hatch on the Gallatin. Uh, highly visible pattern, wasn't the best floater, but um, is, uh, is, is, is worth the effort. Starting off here with a 320 size 12 dry fly hook. Um, good size range for this fly is probably 10 to 14, um, but 12 and 14 were, were the most common sizes that we fished with for the spruce moth hatch. Just getting this thread started behind the eye of the hook, and then I'm going to wrap all the way to the barb, um, and then we're going to tie in a deer hair tail, um, and I like the this medium coastal deer hair, nice light color to it, um, and good stiff fibers for this application. I'm going to cut off a small clump of these, get them stacked. That looks good there. Next we'll measure the length of the tail, which um, I like half to three quarters the length of the shank. Probably going to uh, go a little longer on this one, so three quarters is about right. Pinch that in my left thumb and index finger there. And then my first couple of wraps should be somewhat loose um, here at the rear of the hook. Um, and then I'm going to wrap over these butt ends. Not putting too much pressure because you don't want those fibers to splay out. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way up the shank and then I'm going to trim off the excess fibers here cleanly and now I'm going to start applying pressure as I move back to the rear of the hook and get those tied in nice and tightly. That looks good. <coughs> Next we're going to tie in a strand of small Vivas um, pearl mylar tinsel. This is going to act as a nice little flashy rib. Um, tie that in. Just get a few good wraps and then stop your, your last thread wrap should be right above the barb again. And then next we're going to dub the body. And this is um, a light, natural colored um, hare's ear. Not the best material for floating a fly, um, but it's a nice, give, uh, gives you a nice buggy look. And spruce moths kind of have a, a powdery um, substance to them, so I think this buggier dubbing really adds something to, to the spruce moth pattern. And also, Spruce moths do tend to fish quite well when they sink a little. Um, not, not all fish want to eat those things um, above the surface. Oftentimes you'll get strikes just as uh, that spruce moth dips below the surface. Now we're going to taper a little bit, so a little smaller towards the back. Um, Traditional is a pretty thin body. You could really thicken this up if you wanted to, um, to, to better mimic the, the fat body of a, of a spruce moth. And that's on the thicker end there, and I think that looks great for, for what we're doing. Um, next, I'm going to take my pearl tinsel, and then I'm just going to um, rib this forward, getting probably five wraps um, until we get to the front here. And we'll secure that right in front of the body. Next we're going to tie in a wing um, from Calftail, which is what makes this fly extremely visible. Um, get that in a hair stacker after you clean out the guard hairs. Those are nice and lined up there, so we just want to get that uh, sized up here. And I like the, the wing to extend uh, about the, the end of the tail there, so that's about right. Once I have that in position, I'll pinch with my left hand. And then we'll tie that, at, and tie that in, trying to keep everything on top of the hook there. It wants to rotate a little bit, but we're going to now move forward. 
and make a nice even thread base that extends um, to just about the eye. Um, and one one thing I dislike about the commercial, uh, the old commercial version of this fly is the, that wing had a tendency to, to pop out. So instead of trimming that and, and hiding it all under thread, I'm actually going to leave um, a small um, butt similar to Nelker caddis. I think this will um, add a lot of durability to this, this pattern. We can get a couple of thread wraps underneath that to push it up away from the eye a little bit. Now I'm going to take my thread back to where we tied in the wing. And I might play with that a little bit and spread that wing out a little bit so it's more similar to, to the spruce moth natural wing. Next we're going to tie in our dry fly hackle. And I have uh, a feather from a barred ginger and also one from... A grizzly there's there's a barred ginger and there's a grizzly rooster capes um, and you can see I've prepared these feathers in advance so um, I stripped um, the webby material off of the bottom of the feather um, and then I also um, have a piece of exposed stem here for the tie-in point but also on the top side um, I've removed um, fibers a little further back and that allows for that first wrap to start a little bit more smoothly. Um, sometimes if you don't do that you'll have fibers that want to kind of um, splay back like this and it just doesn't look as neat um, from a fishing standpoint doesn't really matter. Uh, when I tie these in I'm going to tie these in on the side of the hook and I want the convex side of the feather or um, darker side of the feather to be facing forward um, towards the eye of the fly. So I got that tied in kind of at an angle there as you can see and then I'm just going to make some tight wraps over those bare stems all the way up to um, this head here. Now I'm going to tie in one feather at a time. I'm going to grab the, the barred um, our ginger first and see how those first wraps stand straight up and down very clean looking um, better than that second wrap actually and then we'll just move forward three four five six I like a nice full hackle for this pattern um, really helps it to float well um, which is one of the bigger challenges for this fly. And then I'm going to get in here close, snip that off. We'll have some, some fibers we'll need to clean up later as well. Now we're going to get this grizzly feather and we're going to move a little more slowly with this one and pull it straight up. My first wrap will be behind um, the grizzly um, wraps. Then I'm going to go start to move in and then I'm just going to slowly kind of wiggle side to side as I advance through this so I don't trap down any fibers from the, the barred ginger and then last wrap will be up front here tie that off I'm going to kind of pull these back and trim off Gonna push that back a little bit. I'm gonna whip finish um, just right in front of the hackle here. Oh, lost focus. I'm going to trim off some of these fibers. And then you can add some head cement and um, or some super glue. Clean that up. 
Hi guys, being ornery. My scissors are being ornery. There we go. All right, that's all done. If you wanted to sit a little lower, this to sit a little lower in the film, you could trim the hackles off of the bottom, um, but I really, I really don't like to do that, so I can maintain some good buoyancy. So. Um, uh, spruce moth wings kind of are pretty flat and, and splay out, so sometimes I'll manipulate those wings as I'm fishing um, so they have a similar profile. Thanks for watching.